Hey, hey, Ian, you here with yet another Fire app review, and today we are reviewing Google's keyboard app, which was creatively named Gboard. I doubt most people really care or talk about their favorite keyboard apps. So, so why, why, why are you making a video about one? Well, for your information, I do it for the children. And I'm also trying to make more videos in general, so we'll see how that goes. I hope you appreciate my efforts. Gboard has about 500 quadrillion downloads, mostly because it comes pre-installed on a lot of phones. It has a rating of 4.2. The screenshots are looking pretty kawaii down here too. Uh, let's download it. It's 19 megabytes, which is a little heavy. And um, after you open it, you need to set up some permissions and make it your default keyboard. Then when you're done, you land on a pretty boring looking settings screen. Here you can add more languages to your keyboard, which is pretty cool because for each new language you add, you can also select the keyboard layout you'd like to use. And there's quite a few, including even custom layouts for some languages. On the keyboard, you can long press on the spacebar to select the language and layout you'd like. And from then on, the suggestions for the words you're typing will be in that language. You can also set preferences for your keys, like deciding whether to show the number row or how you will switch emojis. There's key pressing preferences and there's even a one handed mode for when uh, one of your hands is uh, busy. You can change the theme of your keyboard by selecting different shades of solid colors or by having images as the background of your keyboard, which is only for people who don't like seeing their actual keys. To add on to that, you can make any image on your phone the background of your keyboard and even decide whether you want borders between your keys. You have settings on text correction which lets you determine whether the keyboard will automatically correct you or add capitalization and periods. You can enable or disable emoji suggestions and you can even prevent potentially offensive words from being suggested to you. Pussies! Gboard also has a feature called glide typing which I always thought was cool but have never once in my life used cause it just feels weird. Maybe some of you out there actually type by sliding your fingers around but it seems more or less like a gimmick to me. You can of course use your voice to type by tapping on the microphone icon here which is a feature I rarely use but I'm sure can be pretty useful to a lot of people. You get access to and can manage your personal dictionary by removing or adding custom words that you might want to be suggested to you while you type. Gboard also has an extra weird slash cool feature which lets you make a google search within the keyboard and you can then send the link to whoever you're talking to without having to leave the app. It's a little bit like what Allo has with the Google Assistant and can probably be useful if you want to share a YouTube video or something. And last but not least, if you don't want to see the Gboard app icon in your launcher, you can easily hide the icon from the settings too. All in all, this is the keyboard I've been using for quite some time now. It has a lot of features and settings you'll probably just leave as default, but the flexibility you get with the preferences is pretty great. The design of the keys can't change, so you'll mostly be stuck with kinda plain looking but cleanly organized keys, which is something that might matter to you because there are other keyboards out there with fancier looking keys. I'll give Gboard an 8.5 out of 10. It does the job really well, all things considered. I mean, it's a keyboard app, lets you type and stuff. Um, That's it for this video. The app is available on Android and iOS. Comment, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.